Hello everyone, welcome back. <clears throat> my voice is a little bit off today. My wife brought home a, a head cold for me and decided to share. So uh, we'll get through this though. I really wanted to show this gun uh, rather than wait on making this video because uh, this is a gun I've been searching for for quite a while. Had a few opportunities to buy one. But this one finally came up on auction and was at a very good price considering uh, what I've got with it. Of course, this is the Colt 1908 Vest Pocket Hammerless. Uh, we've done these little Colt 25 automatics before, uh, namely this, this one here. I'll bring it up real quick. You can go back to my videos and search on this. Uh, they're similar guns, but not exactly identical. In fact, there's quite a few differences from this being a hammered version. Uh, this one was not actually even built by Colt. And like I said, go back and watch that video if you if you want to learn more about this one. Uh, they changed quite a bit. This is quite a bit larger gun, in fact. Uh, all these guns have been double-checked for uh, safety, so... Uh, the main size difference in these is the grips. This one, the grip is quite a bit shorter. But uh, the magazines, of course, do not interchange at all. You can see there's quite a size difference in the magazines, too. Uh, the uh, Colt 25 Automatic has a quite a bit larger magazine. And, of course, uh, this era of guns, you got to really watch the magazines. Make sure you're getting the correct one for these. Even these had different kinds of magazines. These were made in uh, two styles. <clears throat> the early ones like this. Uh, being This one does have the magazine disconnect, and an earlier style did not. And uh, the earlier style is actually straight across on the magazine. Whereas this one is curved. And what that does is it allows it to slip up past the magazine disconnect and, and disengage it. So uh, the magazines on Colts are ex just prohibitively expensive for some reason. Uh, they're hard to find for one thing. And for another thing, you got to make sure you get the correct one for that very reason. Uh, even these Colt 25 automatics have different magazines for the different... This is an Astra built one in Spain. <clears throat> and of course, this and these were built in the United States. Uh, they are all marked Colt, but they are not all Colt magazines. You can see these Astra ones, different holes set up, even though they look virtually identical. They will not operate in, the, in, a, in a nearly identical gun just because one was built in Spain and one was built in the United States. But these are the same way. And you got to watch these. I hate to bore you too much with magazine discussion, but uh, these are two-tone magazines, as you can see. Uh, the reason that is is because uh, on these older, they didn't have the, the metal technology then, and they needed to harden these feed lips on the magazine. And so the way they would do that, once the magazine was built and blued, uh, they would uh, dip the feed lips in a, a molten cyanide solution and heat them and temper them. And that would etch off the bluing on them. Now, there are a few unscrupulous manufacturers or people out there, not actually manufacturers, that are creating this same look. And you can usually tell because it's a perfectly straight, crisp, line where these are going to be kind of wavy and various angles you can see two very different ones here these are both original also double check the markings on the uh, on the base and that's what the markings should look like so be wary of that because of the the cost of these if you find one at a hundred dollars or less you've done very well uh, usually they're going to run 150 to 160 even more dollars depending on the condition of them believe it or not so uh, I found this firearm for uh, right right around the $300 mark with two magazines and a holster so I was 
pretty uh, it was a pretty easy purchase for me uh, on the auction but I had quite a bit higher bid in it it went for a reasonably low price I thought uh, what a wonderful little firearm let's get right into the firearm this one was built in 1919 and uh, well you think that may be an early one it's actually not this is the later version with the magazine disconnect as I said uh, they they do have a heel lock uh, kind of the European style on the magazine we'll go ahead and insert it here as I said it's already been safety checked we'll grab this one one of them works a little better than the other one but still you can see they won't drop free they're very with this heel release riding on it it won't drop free and then when you hit this point right here you can see it resists that's because there's a little lever in here that the recoil uh, spring and guide rod is actually forcing back uh, it's a rather ingenious design that came along later of course this is a browning design gun as you can tell by its similarity into the development of the 1911 it looks real similar to it. a lot of similar features and of course a lot of similar features to the early earlier firearms of course this one was originally built by fn in belgium because uh colt wasn't interested in it but as soon as colt saw how well these firearms were doing uh, they jumped on that bandwagon too in typical cult fashion. Uh, they went, oops, we made a mistake. They ignored the public again. And uh, Browning actually sold his patent to uh, two companies, then, the FN and then the cult company started making these also. But anyway, as you can see, absolutely no drop free on that little six round magazine. So seven round capacity if you count one in the chamber. So. Uh, has to be forcibly removed pretty typical of these magazines but anyway uh, the, the takedown on on these is very similar however these have a takedown notch with the safety the safety is on the rear of these it simply blocks the slide and uh, also prevents the trigger from being firing uh, will allow the striker to release now this is a striker fired gun it's one of the earliest versions of this there were earlier versions of the striker fired gun uh, the the Colt 1903 pocket actually had a hammer encased in it but this was too small to put a hammer in so it does have a striker and this was probably the first widely accepted striker fired gun uh, clear back in the, the 19 the early 1900s so here we are in 1919 gun exactly 100 years old as I make this video and <clears throat> like I said the takedown is very similar on these guns but no notch on this one so you gotta hold the uh, the slide back against that spring tension this one I had to replace all the springs in because it had sat for a hundred years uh, it, typical of most of these guns they were carried a lot and shot very little uh, the internals on this gun are absolutely perfect the bore is looks like it was made yesterday um, but it's the same takedown procedure where you force the the gun into a position that you can actually turn the barrel right there it is and then uh, the that allows the slide to come off to the front and uh, the striker actually rides on this little uh, protrusion that's built into the frame so the barrel it's a blowback so the barrel doesn't move uh, at least not much there might be a little slack in it as it resides in those lugs in the frame but that's all there is to the takedown of it it's relatively simple but kind of a mystery if you haven't seen it but you can go back and watch the video on this gun and I demonstrate that also uh, the takedown of it uh, very similar except you don't have the assistance of the safety uh, lever uh, holding it in the correct position to get that lug out uh, the lugs released on the on the barrel 
so it's a beautiful blued gun uh, this one does have some wear on it it was carried a lot um, yeah it also a company it was a little police holster these this company the metropolitan uh, uniform company in Detroit is not in existence anymore uh, recently uh, about 10 years ago I believe they shut down kind of almost odd to have a holster for a gun that's this size but what a great backup gun for a police officer a uh, really deep concealment type gun which is what they were designed for uh, you can see the whole gun fits in the palm of my hand it's hard to describe the size of these I have some other very small guns and this gun still dwarfs all of those uh, the 25 ACP, I'm not going to argue the merits of that cartridge. It didn't get the development that the other uh, small cartridges did, like 9mm, 380 auto, and uh, kind of fell out of favor because of its low end power. It's the smallest center fire uh, cartridge that could be designed to still take a center fire primer, so the case is very small the 20 well 25 caliber it's actually shorter than a 22 long rifle and so it's been argued that it's not that great of a cartridge but i would rather have this than a pocket full of rocks to throw at somebody so the sights uh <laughs> what there are of them you can see that small notch right there and then the absolutely tiny front post if you can see it right there by my thumb and we'll bring it in here so you can kind of see what you're up against and trying to use the sights on this firearm virtually uh, impossible it's more of a uh, five foot point and shoot type firearm it's not meant for any type of accuracy work even though the accuracy is good on them build quality is very high uh, with that nice bluing that I mentioned and plus you can see the color case hardening on the trigger on the uh, the grip safety and on the the the, uh, the frame safety there the thumb safety also you can see the rampant horse engraved into the uh, the slide and it's also on the grips these also I believe came with wood grips similar to this one with the medallion in it and all that the grip safety let's talk about that a little bit now when this is in my hand one finger is all I can get and I don't have that big of hands but one finger is all you're going to get on that so to oppose that you've got a pretty hefty spring it's got a, uh, similar to a 1911, it's got a leaf spring back here. Uh, it's a, that leaf spring takes care of several things. As it comes down, it comes in a little V. It operates the, uh, the magazine release, the grip safety. It also operates as the trigger spring. This does have a, the, the trigger bar or connecting rod that you might call it in there. It's very similar to a 1911 except for it's not on the trigger it's separate from the trigger trigger just a little pivoting piece of metal and as it comes around on both sides of the magazine a little hole through it and then uh, engages with the sear it's got a separate sear that rides in here that operates the striker but to get that grip safety pulled with the web of your hand very substantial and then a very substantial trigger pull all all safety oriented because these were designed to just be dropped in your in your vest pocket your suit coat pocket and uh, have a nice concealable easy to carry firearm for protection give you some close-up views you can see some of the bluing wear on this little firearm But you can also see that the grips are outstanding 
hardly any wear on the grips at all just a few little scratches here and there so as I said carried a lot shot very little so there we have it one of my I, I, I really enjoy collecting these little mouse guns these little pocket guns 25 autos uh, particularly the Colts uh, they made so many uh, Jennings and uh, very low quality cast guns that broke if you looked at them wrong and uh, gave the 25 auto even a worse reputation than it already had as being a low power uh, cartridge and then you had it in a, a gun that would fall apart at the at a heartbeat but these are very high quality it's a very substantial steel gun very well manufactured very well put together and I've read I have not looked close at an FN version of these that, that would came out a few years earlier than Colt version did but it was virtually identical uh, the Colt had the FN beat in build quality from what I understand don't take that for gospel everything I say is just what I hear by word of mouth for the most part since I don't own an FN but I am looking for one for a comparison so there we have it a little Colt 1908 vest pocket they've also made a uh, pocket hammerless too a bit larger in 32 and I believe it was also made in 380 auto possibly a police gun as it came with this little used holster it might have been added on later so there you have it uh, real fun economical colt to buy uh, some of them pristine versions will run you as possibly as high as two thousand dollars if you can find one that is in uh, perfect condition but I would uh, say if you can get one in the $300 to $500 price range, depending on condition. Uh, this one was advertised as 60%, but I believe it's a little bit better than that. I'd put it closer to oh, 75 maybe even 80% on the finish. If you can find it, that in, in a $300 price range, you've really got a good deal. So... So thanks for watching. We'll get these out later on in the year and start doing some more shooting with some of these firearms and uh, see how it, how it functions. And uh, until then, thanks for watching.